We have breaking news here in Bachelor Empire. Hello, everybody. It's Dave Neal, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. I'm here remote on location in Mexico, so pardon the bad audio. But uh, we will get you through this video. Madison Pruitt, uh, future wife of Grant Trout, uh, Trizzy Trout, as they call him on the street, uh, buys a home, first-time home buyer. Of course, Madison, uh, from a uh, daughter of a, a coach, college coach in the South, and, of course, Grant Trout, son of a billionaire. Son of a bee? <laughs> Whenever I say, oh, that son of a bee. He's a son of a bee. He's a son of a billionaire. They bought her first home, so let's talk about it here. We'll get into it. By the way, that's not the home. Just so you guys know, I put that in there. That's, I, I don't know what the home is. I just env I envision that this is the home that Jesus would provide them. Now, don't get me wrong. We don't need to make this all political. Jesus wasn't into politics. You guys know, actually, Jesus was probably a social democrat, if you think about it. He wanted everyone to have health care. He, um, he wanted the poor to be provided for and all that. But uh, anyway, I digress. We don't need to get into that, or do we? Uh, we have an election around the corner here. But it's good that we've got Maddie and Grant buying a home, but how fast? I mean, you have to, because, uh, well, oh, okay, look, well, we don't have the home here. And by the way, I'm not bitter at all, at least consciously. I'm sure subconsciously there's like that sort of like, you know, gene within me that likes to call out BS. Uh, as we see here in Maddie's profile, it says, love greatly, always stand up for what you believe in, which I believe she is. I think for the most part, people stand up for what they believe in until they take a six-figure sponsorship with a company called Shein, which has violated many different international laws with regards to slave labor, uh, plagiarism, uh, ripping off of other cultures, kind of a lot going on there. But anyway, I'm sure she didn't even know about that. I'm sure she was just like, oh, cool, I got a job. She's an influencer, good for her. Let's just read some of the comments, though. Oh, what, what, oh, what, what I would give to see that Zillow posting. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll, by the way, we will for sure, and again, I don't mean this to dox them. I'm not going to share their address, but we want to look inside the house. Are you guys as nosy as I am when it comes to buying homes? I love the home tours. I love to know what, I want to know where Maddie's sex dungeon is going to be, because let me tell you something. She's going to have a sex dungeon. Okay, she might not know it yet, but I bet her and old Grant Trout, that son of a bee, are going to be out there, uh, you know, tying each other up with, um, you know, vegan leather tassels, as you do. Dallas property records are public online, although I ran, to, I ran to the search after seeing this post, and there's no record of him or her owning anything. Yeah, chances are, if they're buying in Texas, by the way, that means they don't have to pay um, state income tax. Well, Texas doesn't have state income tax. That's good. They can save money there. It's a, probably a good place to be a billionaire if you live in Texas. Uh, change in ownership on the accessors website typically takes around 30 days before it's updated. So if they close today, chances are that it won't show for about a month. All right, so I vow to you guys to not share their address, but I feel like we can check out their place. I'm sure they're going to do it as influencers. So here they are, the fastest wedding ever. And by the way, I'll be, I'll be quite honest. I'm happy. I'm happy for everyone who's happy. I wouldn't change their life for mine in one second. You guys know my story. Um, kind of like the sort of story that most people have, which is struggling in the middle class. Most of us are middle class people uh, struggling to kind of find our own identity, carve out our own section of life. I know that right now there's a lot of people with investments, retirement, and things aren't doing well out there. We're all trying our best, right? We're all trying our best. I'm trying to keep my business going while I'm you know, balancing a wedding. As you guys know, I made a dozen videos beforehand, uh, which essentially bled me dry last week, but it allowed me the chance to free up time this week and have such a great wedding, which by the way, I posted in the last video some details of that. I'll have the mother Sundance, which by the way, you know I lost it. I'm not one of those types that's like, oh, I'm not gonna cry. I was like, I'm gonna cry, you're gonna know about it, and that's fine. My mom and I are gonna have a moment on that dance floor. And there was not a dry eye in that reception when Tasha took the dance floor with her father to the tune of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. It was fantastic. We'll share those videos with the Patreon, patreon.com slash Dave Neal. So here they are. As we know, Maddie's been pretty open about saving herself for marriage. And because of that, they fast-tracked their way. They're like, listen, do what you got to do. Sprint, don't walk down that aisle, and let's get married. So here they are. Oh, she's doing a Walmart fall fashion. Oh, isn't that great? Listen, you thought Shein was a bad company. How about Walmart? <laughs> and don't get me wrong, I still shop there on occasion. They have a very big frozen produce section, and they have certain uh, vegan pizzas that we can't find anywhere else. I'm just saying, 
it's funny that Walmart is also, it's like, we need to get Maddie, we need to get Maddie Tasha's publicist. At least Tasha's in the high fashion world. Maddie's in the, uh, uh, I don't know, dress up the Barbie world here with these uh, $3 shirts. It can't, you know, it can't be sustainable for the globe to be, have, to be mass producing $3 shirts. But then again, who am I, right? Who, I'm Power Recap for Dave Neal, but who am I to judge Maddie when, you know, would I take the deal? Like, I don't know. I've got an iPhone. This was made, you know, it's all from a company that, you know, okay, you guys get the point. We, we quickly lose um, any sort of credibility when we take a, a place of moral superiority. Um, but anyhow, so there she is. That's not the place. Let's see what else she's got going on. She's doing her fall fashion guide there. She's got the uh, Christian, sort of Christian girl fall happening. Oh, by the way, Tasha has the same suitcase. Oh, but what was that, dude? Was she flying economy? She's just like you and I. Ladies and gentlemen, breaking news, Madison Pruitt, just like you and I. Um, she's got a giant following for someone who hasn't been a lead on the show. She's really been crushing it in the uh, sort of um, Christian speaker influencer game. You know, but the question a lot of people are asking, and, you know, look, I, I'm, I'm, I, I think influencers should be held accountable to whatever products they promote by all means. But at the same time, I also believe in like the free market as it exists. To an extent, I don't believe that pharmaceutical companies should just be running rampant and profiting and this and that. I believe if a company wants to pay her money to promote their clothes, fine. But we can criticize her if that company doesn't have good practices. That's just how it works. Um, but a lot of people have been like, what do they even do? You know, what do they do? What, is, what does Grant do for a job? Do they, does he speak? Does he just do church speaking? And if your income is just speaking at churches, and churches are like tax exempt, doesn't that make you? Doesn't it feel like some weird money laundering thing? I mean, is it just me? What do I know? Is it possible for me to anger people while I'm in a tank top? I'm not trying to trigger any folks out there. I kind of feel like if if we would have lost you, we would have lost you already. All right, so there she is, fiance. What does what does fiance even mean? Is it like Beyonce? But Faye, I don't get it. She, I'll tell you what, she's got pretty good fashion. And you know, I'm not one to, I've, I've tried to be a better, I've tried to be better at not criticizing people's looks. So, and again, I'm not, and I think she's beautiful. I'm not, I'm not, I, that's, that wasn't the, the direction I was going. Um, I'm just saying, I think she does a good job with her style for the most part. Um, God knows well, at her age I, or, and at my age, I had no style. All right, so we have sorority squats happening here. Everyone looking good, getting in the photo. We have bitch wings and skinny arms, and uh, everyone's looking very nice. Very nice photo there. Very nice hot pink outfit, kind of like some sort of legally blonde thing happening there. Very good. Um, I know you guys like it when I uh, sort of analyze women's fashion because I have none on my end. So here they are driving some vintage car. Yeah, I mean, I'll just, I'll just say this. I always wonder, like overcoming adversity, you can't blame them for having the privilege of wealth. You can't blame them for growing up with, uh, in, in a world where they, they probably haven't had to cry over whether or not they're going to make rent that month. Maybe they have, but as far as we know from the receipts, you know, they grew up, he grew up a billionaire. Dad buys him a basketball team. Dad donates to his college, and he's on the team. Those types of things. Look, look, like you can't fault him for that. What's he supposed to do, refund the money, you know? But when it does come to adversity, like if and when I have kids, I, and I heard this from Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis, right? Mila, Mila, where they said, we're rich, our kids aren't. If I want my kids to learn the value of a dollar, I want them to learn about hard work and learn about working towards their goals to achieve their dreams. I kind of feel like if I don't help them out, I'm sorry, I kind of feel like if I give them everything that they might not value that and then they might kind of live off of their dad, Hunter Biden, you know, that type of, right? I mean, like when, you know, you know, he's obviously got an addiction. It's a complicated story. But hey, look, I can criticize the left too, folks. Come on, right? Uh, you know, you only criticize one side. No, we're coming scorched earth from Mexico, all right? Uh, my neighbors are like, who's he talking to? Um, I, anyway, after this, I'm going down to the beach. But my point being, when you talk about like, um, social democracy is that some people need help. Um, I can actually bring this back to my mom. This is probably a good idea. I can bring this back to these photos. In my last video, I talked about my mom here, who, um, I'll just pause it right here. 
Uh, my mom is a business lady, but she also raised me and my sister when she was in her young 20s and left my father. And I, I have no, I talk about this on stage, I talk about this in podcasts, so I've, I'm an open book to talk to you guys about it. My mom worked really hard as a single mom with no child support. Not to say that that should have been the case, but she worked really hard and was able to receive government funding as well to help her so that she could get on her two feet, so that she could be a good mom, that she could have a little assistance to get to where she is today, which is now married to my stepdad. They are business owners. They pay their fair share in taxes. They give back to the community. The social democracy worked. Now, that's not socialism, right? That's social democracy. Social democracy is um, uh, fired uh, trucks and uh, police forces and school systems. And when people need help, some assistance to help them, you know, help them be able to afford student lunches and this and that. So I'm happy to report that uh, having used the system and having, uh, like most people did, benefited from it in a way to get back on her two feet, uh, she now gets to enjoy the back end of life where she gets to uh, go, you know, uh, you know, to the to the wedding and uh, do beach yoga and do the things that are providing her so much joy. So I wanted to shout out my mom there. Now, not saying Grant and Maddie can't have that. I just, I just know every day the gratitude that I have for all that I've been provided and all that we've kind of um, squeezed out of this uh, this life that we have right here. And I wish the best for them. And I, and and uh, you know, we'll, we'll, here's what we'll do. We'll we'll just hold them to a high standard. We'll say, hey. You know, where are you spending your money? Are you paying your taxes? Are you helping people out? That's what God wanted. And let's hope that they practice what they preach. More content coming your way probably tomorrow. I'm probably done for the day unless there's any crazy news. But go check out my other two videos that I've got today. And I will see you back in studio on Wednesday. Tuesday, we'll be back with maybe a couple more uh, Vacation Dave photos. Uh, but um, I'll be on Instagram at Neils. And also, like I said, patreon.com slash Dave Neal. I'll have by the end of the week the full wedding video you want to see Tasha and I in our first kiss, that's right. Looking pretty good. Not a bad ring, right? And you can see Tasha's new custom design ring and all that jazz. All right, folks. We'll talk to you soon. Bye, guys.